Good morning or afternoon or evening. I, I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do this. It's morning, so I don't know uh, what else to say than good morning when I when I jump on here. But thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for being with us uh, as we keep on in our, our, our podcast efforts here, as we continue to look at ways that uh, Christians can be an effective influence in the workplace uh, and ways of, of uh, dealing with some difficult things in the workplace as a Christian. How, how do you combat these things. Uh, with me, as always, from uh, beautiful, dark Somerset this morning is Michael Ray. How's everything in Somerset? I mean, you pulled me up at the crack of dawn. I, before the crack of dawn, <laughs> I mean, look around. It's dark. This is ridiculous. Can't Sorry. be expected to function at my expected high level at these ridiculous hours of the morning. Uh, you should. I'm the night owl. You, you were in bed at what, like six or seven last night? I mean, that's, is that your normal bedtime? That is, that is not the point. <laughs> don't know how that's relevant. <laughs> this morning, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Um, and, and we're going to look at a few, uh, again, continuing HR issues. It seems like um, as we were concluding last time, we still had a, a few more things we wanted to get through and we think are, are fairly important. Um, due to the uh, laws of time constraints this morning, though, um, for those of you that are normally in love with spending an hour with us, uh, that's not going to happen this morning. Um, because we've got some things that are going to bump up against it. So we're going to be, you know, 30, 35 ish uh, minutes this morning, um, sticking here in the HR department. Um, Michael, kind of tell us very quickly how we got to HR. How, how did we get there from our study for those that are picking us up after a while? Well, you know, the, the endeavor of this series of, of conversations is how we how we're going to deal with our Christianity in the business, in the business world, and in in our in our daily lives uh, in the business world, knowing that you know as Christians because of different skill sets we come from a variety of different departments in the business, but regardless of where we live, Colossians three twenty three says we were to work with enthusiasm and we're to work as if to the Lord, um, and, and we also know that from Ephesians chapter six. We, we know that um, we're to do our work, again, not like people are watching, but like God's watching, but we're also doing the will of God from the heart. And, and so doing our work well, our work lives well, is doing the will of God from the heart. And, and so in, in all of our different business lives, that, that brings about um, unique challenges, whether we're in um, sales or production or accounting or HR. And so we've kind of been bouncing around the... Uh, uh, the, the corporate uh, structure uh, across the organizational chart and talking about specific issues that, um, that, that are handled by each of these departments. And so, as you mentioned, um, in, in today's conversation, we're, we're, there's, a, there's a handful of HR issues that, that uh, are, are still left on the bone, I think, for us to talk about this morning. And we may find out as we go along that these are more HR adjacent than truly, than truly <laughs> HR. I, I, but uh, good conversations and, and good topics for us to wrestle with um, in our Christian lives. So, a couple of first, a couple of clarifications and corrections. As I, li I listened last night to our uh, to our award winning first episode on on HR, and the first thing I'd like to note is that that I, I struggled three times and never came across correctly with the word subsistence. And so, <laughs> and so I'd like to just for the record say that I do know how to pronounce that word subsistence living. So that they anyway, that that's, we talked about pay levels and we, we may get into that again, but uh, I think perhaps a, a good way to start is uh, Mike, you know, in, in our, in our last conversation, we, we, we began this conversation about, should we be looking for Christians or non-Christians in the workplace to work around? And it was kind of a, um, uh, kind of started that conversation there. And so, you know, would, you would want to work around Christians for all of the reasons that you might expect for influence and, and a good work environment. Um, right? And yet, you know, you made the point that perhaps at times um, we should be, um, I don't know necessarily looking for non-Christians, but not not scared of having uh, non-Christians around us in the workplace. And in fact, you brought up a mythical uh, Christian business. <laughs> I think it's the word you put, a, a mythical Christian business environment. And so I guess the question is, is that mythical? Um, 
should we, what do you have any um, problems with surrounding yourself with brethren in the workplace? And then if that does happen, you know, what kind of unique challenges or opportunities does that present? You know, we'll let you start on that conversation. Right. And I think that's a great question. Um, and, you know, I, I struggle with it, honestly, because uh, because I see both sides of the coin. Um, you know, I, I can see the, you know, Galatians 6 angle of, you know, do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. And there's some thoughts there of do we, you know, give preference, and, and I think rightly so, to those that are Christians. Um, but but also, I, I think there's a, you know, there's an obligation to your other how many ever employees that you really try to hire the best people for the job. Um, so, you know, if, if you've got, you know, this stellar candidate, A, that's out there that is not a Christian, um, but does fit the culture. So I want to go back to something that, that Michael said last week, which I think is, is, is really important and, and, and kind of incredible in this is that, you know, when we talked about dealing with immoral people or, or people that, that um, don't have, um, not only morals, but, but any kind of faith that you would hope that the culture chokes them out. Okay. So I, I think that's part of it. If you have a culture fit, but maybe they're not a Christian, maybe they're, you know, maybe it's Cornelius that you're looking to hire, right. To head up your security. Okay. So you got Cornelius, but you've also got, you know, some, a brother or sister from the church and they're not as qualified as Cornelius. So, you know, do you give them the, the nod and not do the best thing for the rest of the employees that are there by hiring in a Cornelius? Um, I, I would struggle in that place. You know, I would say if I got candidate A and B and they are, you know, a tie and one's a Christian, I give them the nod. But if I've got, you know, a candidate that does, again, I'm going to clarify that does fit the culture, um, but is not a Christian, I, I, I'm going to hire them. Um, and, and I'm going to hope that like Cornelius, uh, they're an opportunity to, to convert, um, to be a Christian, that, that when they get in, they understand that the reason for the culture is not because we got some pithy sayings on the wall, but the reason for the culture is that we we're Christians. We believe in God and, you know, all of our decisions are founded and based on that. Um, so you would hope that, you know, that that opens the door. Um, you know, that, that's, that's how I would answer it. Let me, yeah, let me throw this back to you in, in a way. Um, can you really, I mean, I'm, I'm again, I'm, we're at mythical, you know, brotherhood business XYZ. Uh, can you, I mean, of course, in our mythical world, you can do this, but in the real world, in the workplace, can you evangelize in the workplace? I mean, is, is my scenario even halfway believable that we can bring a guy in and convert him? I mean, is that that realistic in today's environment? Yeah, evangelism in the workplace is, is an important and, and I think difficult topic because um, absolutely, I think it's important that we um you know, are the salt and light in the workplace and, and evangelize and, and show who Jesus is through what we do every day. I mean, I would hope that any Christian would have that same attitude. How overtly you do that is, is not at all in my mind straightforward. Um, and there, there's, some, there's some both legal and practical reasons for that uh, in my mind. You know, um, first of all, I, and you, you probably have dealt more with this piece than I have, but, you know, if, if, if you were going to have an overtly, you know, we we're going to wave the, the Christian flag um, around our workplace kind of mentality, you, you're going to, at some point, per, have the issue of uh, folks who believe other things wanting equal time. And how do you, and how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, if, if the, and, and again, if you're going to treat those people with with some respect and some deference, how are you going to how are you going to handle that situation? So you better be prepared to deal with that. I think there are ways to deal with that, but you better be prepared for it. And, and secondly, when it when it is kind of a known corporate fact that Christianity is well received in the workplace, you always have the potential of um like the folks in John six that came to Jesus for the bread, you, you always have the potential of um, 
people displaying Christian attributes on behalf of their promotion prospects uh, or on behalf of their job prospects. Mm-hmm. And so are they, are they, are they converted to Jesus or are they converted to, um, you know, pay raises and, and performance reviews. And so again, not saying that there aren't, aren't ways to, to handle that with some, some prayer and some good judgment, but, but I think it is, um, somewhat difficult to have an overtly, um, we, we are going to, uh, try to evangelize the world during the work day. In, in my judgment, those things are done much better on a personal, you know, on a personal level, one-on-one building relationships, having conversations, um, than as a, as a corporate, uh, goal that I think that gets tricky. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I'm with you. I, I agree. I, I think it's very difficult to have a, you know, Bible study before you kick off earnings. I mean, I, I just, I, I think, I think you're gonna have trouble there. Um, and, and let's understand that we live in a world where legally, you know, certain things you, you're inviting some trouble. Um, you know, when, when you, you know, again, don't give necessarily equal space. Um, for some of that, uh, you've got some discrimination stuff that can be thrown at you. Um, you know, if you, you know, especially if you're espousing, uh, Christian values and, you know, let's say you have an employee that's, you know, homosexual or has a child that's homosexual and, you know, they get offended by, you know, studying first Corinthians, uh, and they can fire back and, and you can be in a vulnerable place legally, um, you know, if they, you know, claim discrimination or whatever. So, you know, I, I think you've got to be very careful in, in how you do those things. You got to be careful in, in what you do. Um, but I, I, there, there's a point that, that you said there, Michael, that I think um, gets lost uh, maybe or, or, or doesn't get as much play as it should <laughs> is that, first of all, evangelism is not it's not really what we do from the pulpit on Sundays. I mean, I think people get lost in that. You know, we call these guys evangelists because we gave them a microphone and, you know, it sounds better than some other titles or something. I don't know. But evangelism is building relationships with people. It, it's going through some stuff with them. And what better to go through some stuff with at and then in the workplace, you're going to have some bad days with people. You're going to have some struggles and you're going to have some things that are, that are good. And you're going to have some exciting days in the workplace. And so what better to build those relationships and to show Jesus in your life, than when you're going through the ups and downs of, of the workday and, and of the workplace and let those lead to the conversation. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, hey, let's have a Bible study. It, it's, it's a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you Jesus in my life. And then we'll have an opportunity to talk about, you know, sirs, what must I do to be saved? We'll have an opportunity for someone to say, you know, hey, uh, what, what are you doing? Because uh, you've got a different perspective on this stuff than I do. And so I, I think that that didn't get enough plays it should. But our being us being salt and light uh, should be evangelism no matter where we're at. Um, and it doesn't have to be as formalized, I think, sometimes as we make it out to be. Uh, I will, my caveat to that be that, I, that I've heard some outstanding devotionals at uh, board meetings. And so, you know, I, I, I do think there are ways to do that in an, in a, in an appropriate way, but you got to have, you got to have the right culture. And, and everybody has to understand that these these are elements of our business culture, not only because we create, it creates a great work environment, but but also because we think it's the, the best way to do business. That those that those you know those Christian virtues also lead to us making the best business decision for the long term um, for the long term of this of this business. I, I think that is a, a difficult line to walk, uh, but 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 it, but it is doable. Um, and go ahead. The, I, the one thing I'm going to poke you at is, you know, that's easier at Chick-fil-A than it is at Procter & Gamble, right? You know, it, 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 to your point of culture, I mean, you've got to have the right guys in the room. But if you're at Procter & Gamble, you're at somebody that, you know, has, you know, a, 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 you work for XYZ Corporation and they have diversity initiatives, it becomes very difficult to do some of that stuff overtly. Sure. So I, I think that, you know, so, so just to be fair, 
when you get a culture like Chick-fil-A, it's expected, right? It's expected that you have some religious background and, and it's not, I'm not picking on any companies. They are nobody that's ever worked for Chick-fil-A or knows anything about the company knows that they're, they're very upfront with their faith. That's, that's who they are and, and good for them for that. Right. Um, but there's other, you know, you may not work there. Uh, you may work for other places. And, and I'm just trying to give the other side of the coin that, while you can have some great discussions, if the culture's right, if the company fits right, um, there's you also got to be careful. Yeah, and to your point, you can always have that discussion um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting. You know, after work, at lunch, um, you know those those relationships. So, uh, so good, good, uh, good thoughts there. Which leads me to another question. Then, uh, you know, along, along those same lines. And we, we've talked about this in any number of different um, attributes along the way, di different places in the workplace, is that the, the opportunities or the uh, challenges are very different in a small business with a specific culture than they are in a corporate business um, or, or in, a, in a business that, that doesn't have a Christian culture. And we know that, that you know, Christians are working in all those businesses um, and all those different types of businesses. So... Uh, a challenging question to me is, you know, we, we've kind of taken the, the the stance in a lot of these or, or the position in many of these uh, conversations about what do we do as management to create the right culture? Well, what, if, what if you're a frontline employee in that culture um, and you don't really have the opportunity at this point in your career to have a, a, a significant impact on the culture? You're, you're Instead, you're just kind of immersed and swimming in it. Um, is, there, is there a point where a Christian needs to step back and say, this culture is detrimental to my Christianity. Um, and so does, does God not only care how we work, but does God care where we work? Well, I, I think the, the quick answer to that is, is yes. God, I think God cares where we work. I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's anybody that would say it'd be okay for a Christian to work in a brothel, for example. I mean, I, there, there's some, businesses there are some industries that are just going to be completely out of bounds right yeah. and, and sometimes it's good to start with that you know way out there example to prove the point right so yeah god does care i don't I don't care how loyally and faithfully and godly you're doing your job as the accountant for you know for the brothel that that is not <laughs> it doesn't make that it doesn't make that a holy vocation right yeah i'm not sure how much effect you can have on the culture of the brothel as the bean counter i mean i i'm I'm just not sure you're going to turn that place around. <laughs> um, so uh, let, let's understand that first and foremost. There, there are certain places that are absolutely out of bounds, off limits. Now, if you're at the widget factory, um, you know, that that's going to be different, right? Um, and, and I think that this is also on a case by case basis. You know, I, I don't want to, please don't misunderstand me. I, I don't think that it's responsible. I don't think it's good steward for you to say, you know, my boss was mean to me, I'm going to quit my job and make it a, you know, test of faith. Um, I don't like the culture and I don't have anything else lined up and my family's going to starve. I, I don't think that's the, that's the right idea either. So let, let's try to play between those two extremes. All right. Now, if you have an opportunity and if, you know, you have tried, and, and I look at it this way, I look at it the same way, whether you're in a corporation or whether you're in a country, if management from the top down isn't doing the things necessary, then you have to influence the people around you. So if you are on a production line at XYZ widget company, you can influence the people around you. And while the overall culture of the company may be crap, the five or six people that you touch every day, you can create a culture there. You can say on your production line and your piece of the world, you know, we're doing things this way and it's all based on influence. It's not based on forcing it. It's not based on legislating it. It's based on, look, we're going to do our best. We're going to work for God and we're going to, you know, do everything we can to do things the right way in this five feet of the 2000 foot production facility. Right. So you can have some influence on that area. Now, if it, you know, if you work for an unethical corporation, if, you, if you're asked to do things repeatedly that are just immoral and that are difficult, that you can't swallow and you can't have any influence on, um, then I do think you need to prayerfully consider, hey, is this, this where I need to work? I mean, is there a better opportunity um, for me and my family? One of the things I'm going to go back to, too, here, and, and again, I, 
I don't mean to push too hard and be too difficult here, but Paul converted soldiers in Nero's house, right? We remember this from, from uh, some first, of the other lessons we've looked at? Last right? verse of the book of Philippians, yeah. Okay. They didn't quit, <laughs> right? So you're a soldier guarding Nero and his prisoner, you know, and prisoners, because they end up spending some time with Paul. And yet, you know, the way that Paul identifies them is they still work in that job. They didn't leave. They didn't get converted and leave. Maybe they leave later. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you that as bad as we think we've got it sometimes and, 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 and in our American system of rights, um, you know, sometimes we think that, you know, hey, we can make this stand for the truth or whatever, um, when really maybe we're giving up opportunities. Maybe, you know, instead of being able to influence a small corner of the world, we're running too early. I, I think there's some balance there. I think it should be prayerfully considered. And, and I think if, you know, if you can be a guard in Nero's household, you know, maybe you can work for a bad widget company. I don't know. Along those same lines, but a different topic, this, um, so let, let's assume that, that we are in one of these, one of these mythical places, um, that, that we are, uh, answering to a, a, uh, a Christian supervisor. Um, you know, Paul gives a specific um, note to Timothy about that scenario. So I'm going to read these verses and let you respond to them. And how, do you, how does this apply to, to the workplace 2020? Um, 1 Timothy 6, 1 and 2. Um, let all who are uh, servants regard their masters worthy of honor that the name of God and, and, and his teaching may not be reviled. Those who have believing masters must not be disrespectful on the ground that they are brothers. Rather, they must serve all the better since those who benefit by their service are believers and beloved. So, uh, Mike, if, if we do have a believing master in the words of, in the, in the translation of the English standard, or I think, you know, a, a Christian supervisor would be my spin on that. How, how would it be possible to be disrespectful uh, on the grounds that they are brothers. So I, I think this is something we touched on a little bit last time um, th that, I, that that's important. Um, while I think as Christian supervisors, which, which you and I have, have both been throughout our careers, you know, you want to exercise a certain amount of, of grace um, with, with your employees. You, you want to, you know, and, and that's, listen, that, that's not just as a Christian, you read a bunch of these management books and they say that's empowering. You got to let your people stumble and fall to be able to learn from it and all that. So, but when you're exercising grace, there is an inclination for Romans six and verse one, right? <laughs> you know, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And there is, if you're, employee knows that you operate based on grace, they may take advantage of that and be disrespectful and say, look, I, I can come in late um, because Michael's not going to worry about that. He's going to give me grace of 10 minutes on the time clock. Um, I can leave early to go take care of my kids because Michael knows my kids and you know, he knows I've got to get to him for this. And so I can shirk work responsibilities as long as I, you know, blame it on church, blame it on the kids, blame it on the family, blame it on whatever. And, and that, that can be detrimental to the business because it can be seen that that employee is favored. And when you favor an employee that isn't as productive and that takes advantage of company policies, um, that, that's a bad look and that's a good way to poison a culture. Um, I, I'll throw that back at you though. So, I, I mean, how do you deal with that? How, how do you, I mean, obviously we both agree with Paul, <laughs> but yeah, how I'll, do you... I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and step <laughs> on that limb. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah, so you, how, how do you translate it? Yeah. You, you mentioned that it was, it was detrimental to the, to the culture. You know, I, I would obviously also say beyond that, the, the difficult part of it is it's detrimental to the relationship. And that, that's the, that's the part that, has struggled is, is, you know, I have been fortunate to be in a situation where I have worked with a number of Christians and <clears throat> it's been my experience that those things, um, those are, those, um, situations either are, you know, incandescently positive or they're 
really, really negative. Yes. Um, and and there's there's not many that I would describe as just kind of meh. Um, that, and I would say for the most part, you know, the majority of the time, uh, and maybe I'm just eternal optimist, but the majority of the you time, <laughs> taken as a compliment, most of the time, those relationships flourish, the employee flourishes, that exactly what you see in in First Timothy six and in Ephesians six that happens that you see somebody who's working as to the Lord that 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 they do have the, the Christian fundamentals and that is as First Timothy six says that they sense that because they're working for somebody who has the same um, values and desires as they do that they serve even better um, than than somebody who would you would think would be their equal. They just care more. They, they serve better. And that's the case the vast majority of the time. And those relationships are strengthened and it's, it's overwhelmingly positive. That's, that's not hundred percent of the time that there are, there are cases where somebody tr does try to take advantage or, or you, or you do learn that their work ethic and or their um, moral fiber is not what you would have expected or wanted it to be. And, and those, you know, the business can survive that. Yeah, it, it creates an issue in the business. More, more challenging is it creates difficulty in the relationship. Yes. And as, as a brother, um, how do you handle that? And so, you know, as, as, a, as a Christian supervisor, you better, be, you better be prepared for either side of that coin and, and, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, if those, if those resumes side by side are equal, I'm going to hire the Christian. <laughs> just am. I just, I think that the, the, uh, just, just from a probability standpoint, I think the probability of that person becoming a great employee are higher. Um, if you set the resume side by side. And so you just got to understand that this could go sideways. And, and having, and then, and then you better be prepared to deal with it if and when it does. Uh, so yes, absolutely. It, 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 it does create an opportunity for a strengthening of the relationship, but it also creates an opportunity for, uh, for some challenges. So, so I'm, I'm going to throw this out. This is a bonus question um, <laughs> in, in here. So you've had this, I know I have, um, but how do you deal with it when it's, they're not reporting to you as their supervisor, right? So brother or sister that you go to church with, um, based on where they're at in their career, they're at a different part of the organization. And there may be multiple levels of management before they get back to you, right? They're just at an entry level spot, okay? How do you deal with their immediate boss and uh, and, and them in, in, in that environment when there's some coaching that needs to happen, because I think you put their immediate boss in a tight spot, right? Their immediate supervisor to say, Hey, this is, you know, this is Michael's friend, you know, they go to church together, they go way back, you know, but they need some coaching because they're not doing some stuff right. And, and maybe I need to write them up, put them on a performance plan or something, but I'm nervous that if I do that, Michael's going to be mad at me. So how, how do you, how do you manage, how do you facilitate that situation? So this is another one of these places where the small business and the, uh, and the, the large business may handle the situation differently. I, I, I would, I will tell you that in, in a small business environment, again, man, there's a lot of these, there's a lot of these answers that go back to culture. If, if the, if the culture is such where that front level manager uh, has a good relationship and, and, and they understand the culture and what we're about, they're not going to be scared to have that conversation to say that, hey, you know, Jim on the front line, your buddy here is is either a not not getting it done, or or worse, is is actively a bad employee. Um, I'm gonna have to have a conversation with them. Um, that if if we're in a culture where somebody thinks that that is a scary conversation to have, or they're unwilling to have it, you know that 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 employee is not the only problem. <laughs> so there, there's, there's other, there's serious issues at the organization that are going to have to be addressed. Secondly, in, in that, you know, again, maybe this is a unique small business. 
I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with that frontline employee also. And I'm going to let their supervisor talk to them. But I, if given, given that I know about the circumstance, I'm going to have a brief conversation with them also. You're going to be confrontational. <laughs> Listen, as, as long as it's just me and you talking here, <laughs> I, I think it's our responsibility to do that. Um, <laughs> hundred uh, percent. And, and those, those are really challenging, but I think they can also be positive. Say, say, Hey, listen, we, we brought you into this role because, you know, we, the, the value should align here and we want this to be an opportunity for you. Uh, but, um, for, for this, for this to work out long-term the way that I think that you, and certainly I want it to work, we're going to have to address these issues. Yeah. And, and from the, you know, 800 pound gorilla, which, which is where I work, um, you know, typically what I do is, is I, you know, a lot of times that, that entry level position at the bank is a teller. So you're, you're a teller and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in management. So, you know, there, there's, you're going to report to a teller supervisor who's going to report to a branch manager, who's going to report to a, you know, market president or whatever. And it, in my side of the world, I'm, I'm, I'm in a whole different silo, but I'm going to align more with about three bosses above you is, is where I fall in the corporate structure. So typically what I do in these situations is I have a conversation with their, their teller supervisor, with their branch manager and say, look, you know, yes, I referred them. Um, yes, they are a friend of mine. Yes. You know, I, I, I trust them. And I think that, that they're going to do a good job for you. However, you cannot give them any favoritism or treat anything special you know you, you've got to understand that you know we've got to follow you know procedures here we've got to follow policies here and it's not fair to anybody else because they're friends with me um that that we let stuff slide and you know and, and i ask for the favor that you know is is kind of implied at your small business is that look if they are getting out of line would you please let me know so that i can help you coach um and i'm happy to come in and you know, take them out to lunch and say, look, words kind of gotten back that, you know, things aren't going well here. Um, let's talk about that. Why is that? You know, is, is it, you know, do you feel like you haven't been trained well? Do you feel like, you know, you got some personal issues? I mean, tell me what's going on so that I can help you. And I always look at it from that standpoint and, and frame those conversations as I'm not getting on you. I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong. And, and I'll give you all the resources and support possible to help you get there. Um, but ultimately if it's, you know, Hey, I hate this place. I hate my job. Okay. Well then let's, let's get you out of here. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'll help, uh, you know, whatever way I can to make this transition smooth as, as we can make it. Um, and, and if you're, if you're dealing with a brother, you gotta, sorry to interrupt you. If you're dealing no. with a brother, you, you gotta, you, you gotta kind of step back and say the most important relationship that I'm going to have with this person is as a brother and the relationship that I have as a supervisor or whatever I am is may, may be important. But if I make that more important than my relationship as a brother, man, have I, have I failed dramatically? And so if, 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 this, if this position is not a fit for this person and it's, it's causing anxiety or it's causing, you know, I think you and I have both seen situations where somebody in the wrong seat, their life begins to spiral in other ways and it, it leads to other bad decisions or, or other. And so what, as a brother, my relationship, my, my, my responsibility is to put this person in a place where they're going to flourish. And I hope that's in our organization, but if it's not, I want to figure that out too. Yeah. And, and I think that's, uh, that, that to me is always the most difficult conversations going back to our management classes, understanding, Hey, it's okay that this isn't the right seat for you on the bus. <laughs> it's that's okay. Not everybody's meant to be a preacher. Not everybody's meant to be a song leader. Um, not everybody's meant to teach Bible class, you know, look there. And there's some people that are outstanding in a Bible class in a classroom that you're throwing them to the wolves if you put them in that auditorium class. And that's okay, let's just understand that and let's put you in the best place to be successful. Um, we are against a hard deadline. And while um, we could keep going back and forth with some of this stuff for uh, hours, as you all <laughs> patient listeners know, um, we're gonna have to have to call a stop here uh, this morning. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, Lord willing, next week, we're going to uh, pick up another part of the org chart here. Um, and, and we may, you know, if, if uh, we feel strongly enough about a couple of these other points we had written down, we may touch on those too. Um, but thank you all for tuning in with us. Thank you for being with us. We hope and we pray that 
this has given you some things to think about. Um, we hope that it's helped you maybe in some difficult decisions that you've had uh, along the way, but that, that's really our goal here is, you know, we're, we're by no means experts. And if you've been listening to us for more than five minutes, you know that, um, but we, we want to do our best to at least give you a place to start and some things to think about. Parting shots on HR. Ready, Mike? So there's, yes. there's, two, there's two verses that I think, um, I wouldn't call them contradictory, but I think they show um, different sides of the same issue. And I, I think the Bible is good at this and making sure everybody comes from a different perspective. Luke 3, 14, one of the things that, that John was preaching out there in the wilderness to those soldiers who came to him was to be content with your wages. So, so that, uh, uh, you know, from an HR perspective, what's our responsibility as an employee? He, he didn't, I don't know that he knew what they were making, but he told him, be content with your wages. Just as a general rule, that's interesting. And, and uh, listen, um, for those of you that listened to last week, he was the one arguing that uh, you, should, <laughs> you should be increasing all the wages. So just, just want to throw that out there. <laughs> so, so from a, from, as a worker, John says, be content with your wages. Um, on the other hand, uh, man, what's that? What's the verse? Uh, you going with don't muzzle an ox or work? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going with to one who works. It is not counted as a gift, but as his due. Yes. Um, so that I think that's a, that's an interesting. Uh, I think that's First Corinthians. I lost my reference, but to one who works, it's Romans actually, it's Romans four yeah. four. Romans four four. Um, the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. Mm -hmm. And so, if our if our perspective as management is and what a gift I'm giving these guys every two weeks. That's the wrong perspective. And as a worker, if it's I'm discontent with, with what I have agreed to work for, that's the wrong perspective. And so I think as it often does, the Bible puts these two things in a healthy conflict so that we do have to wrestle with it. So anyway, that, that's, my, that, that's my parting shot. These things aren't a gift. People uh, deserve their wages. Um, that's a biblical concept. But at the same time, John says, be content with what you're getting. Um, and, and I think if everybody brings those healthy perspectives into the workplace, it's, it's doable. We'll get to the right spot. Like with most things, um, and, and, and I hate that we keep throwing this at, at you listeners, but, um, I, this is just mine and Michael's theory on life. If you're wrestling with it, you're probably in the right spot. Um, you know, we, I don't know how many times we've said that to each other over the years that, Hey, if you're having the internal struggle, this is right where you're probably supposed to be. Uh, if you're not, be scared. Yes. If the flesh is not warring against the spirit, then then the flesh is winning. Because um, the flesh ain't stopping. So the spirit, you better be struggling with it. Um, so, yeah, that's a good a good place to, uh, to end this morning. Apparently, our stop wasn't as hard as we thought it was. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> it's always Enjoy it, my uh, friend. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.